Hi, it's Dan from DB Games here. Please hit the subscribe button for the channel, uh, hit like on the video, and if you want to ask about anything, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks very much. Hi, welcome to this video. I'm going to look at Ant-Man and the Wasp, compare the two, contrast them, and then give them both a score for how much fun I think they are. Um, as you can see, I can't keep the cards sleeved because both of these cards flip between a small size and a large size. I would assume maybe a larger size sleeve would work okay, but then when you come to fold it, I don't think it's going to fold properly and it's going to not really work. So ideally, you take them out of your sleeves, but when you finish, put them back in. And uh, that seems to work okay for me. And uh, obviously, just keep your hands clean and don't eat any greasy food and stuff, and you'll be all right. Um, first side for Ant Man is Scott Lang. As you can see here, Scott Lang does three recovery, but he also gets an extra one for every. Um, time you go to him you can heal a damage so after you change this form you get an extra damage when you change to the big Ant-Man form you not only do you get three attack and three damage uh, defense even you also get one damage every time you flip to this form and his other side is a tiny Ant-Man form so you get to remove one threat when you turn to this and he still does quite good defense and better the wart so you get to take one threat off the scheme with this small form, so he's also really useful. Especially in like a two-player game, you can flip between the characters quite well and manipulate what you want to do. If you've got a necklace player who's going to take the damage or change it to a Thor or whatever. So working together with your other player, or if you're doing two at once trying to think ahead, you can flip between these forms to great effect to really help the team. Uh, Ant-Man's obligation is called Care for Cassie. Um, yeah, I have to flip his Scott Lang to uh, Exhausted, which removes us out of the game. Or you have to discard one card from your hand. You can't change form until your next turn ends. And then you discard this obligation, which is quite a annoying thing to have to do. So both of these are a bit annoying um, and can disrupt your play. Um, then we've got his enemy or nemesis is the Tech Theft Slide Scheme along with obviously Yellow Jacket, who is his main enemy from the game, um, from the comics, even not the game, and the movies. Um, he has four health, does a lot of scheming and a lot of attack, he's quite annoying. And then he can get attachments, which make him even more annoying. So he gets extra scheme and attack for these when they're attached, and they can make him quite an annoying person to play. And then also this one, reveal your discarded cards when you count a deck until a card, the Ant-Man Nemesis set is discarded this way. Then you have to reveal that card. That can be really annoying to have to do. So obviously it makes this even harder to get rid of and harder to beat. So that's quite a tricky one. Um, then as for Ant-Man himself, you can get a lot of different cards that help him in his different forms. This one, as you can see, says Tiny, so it only works when you're in tiny form. And uh, it has Thwart on it. So... This will remove two threat from a scheme and one additional threat from that scheme for each army of ant support that you control. So it can be really good if you've got a lot set out in front of you, but it takes a bit of time to get that. Um, then he's got things like, if you're in tiny form, you exhaust this uh, army of ants card to deal one damage. Doesn't sound like a lot, but this doesn't disappear and you get to keep this for the whole game. So if you can get this early and get it out, one damage every round over time really adds up. Obviously, if you get it late on in the game, it's not a huge help. So that's where decision making comes in and your understanding of the flow of the game. Things like deal one damage to each minion and deal eight, eight damage to an enemy with this card. Brilliant if you're in giant form. Quite an expensive card, but that's a lot of damage. Excellent if you're playing someone like um, Ultron, who's got loads of minions. Um, also things like upgrade, so if you're in giant hero form. Exhaust the risk on it and spend two um, to attack resources, two fists to stun an enemy. If you're in a tiny form, you can use two of the electric resources or science, whatever you want to call them, to confuse an enemy. Um, that can be handy, save you getting another hit next round. Got things again, giant form, plus one attack until the end of the turn. You get these new pin cards, little cards in both decks. Um, so after you spend this card, you get to heal two damage from your hero. If you're in giant form or you can draw a card if you're in tiny form these are really useful obviously as you can see there's no cost on the top there so these are free to do which is great and handy and obviously only unique to these two characters 
army of ants again if you're in tiny form you exhaust this to deal one damage so if you can get two of these out of the starting and then you're getting two damage per round and that stacks up quick um i didn't find them that useful when i played with them but um, i think they can be if you can get them out of the right times again another giant stomp for more damage resize this costs nothing brilliant change to your other form draw one card amazing that's exactly what you need sometimes with this character and then again one plus one attack at the end of your at the end of your turn resize again army of ants again so these can stack up obviously a lot of times and then they'll have more pin particles and an upgrade for his suit after you change the giant hero form you heal two damage from your hero um, that's a brilliant effect and then also after changes the tiny hero form you get to draw a card this is really really useful so if you can get this out early doors you're really sorted and then you've got obviously your uh, uh, help from your ally of the wasp she's quite strong does two attack and two thwart and it takes three damage the basic deck comes with leadership and a couple of basic cards i picked this card out especially because this one is really interesting it's a tactic and it's team up this is quite a new concept to the game with these characters i think um, ant-man and wasp have to both be played you can only have one of these per card and this will allow you to change your other hero form and then ready your character so you can use it twice so if you're playing with both of these this card is really useful and can be quite cool and i'm hoping there'll be more of these in the other decks as we go through them so this should be interesting i think something like for spider-man and venom that could be a really cool combo of them both taking damage but doing a lot of damage because they don't get along very well or something um the leadership helps ant-man because you've got a few more characters in here like giant man and some others and some useful cards that really help him stack up his damage stinger and other allies and call for aid moxie gives you extra thwart attack and defense to the end of the turn uh, ronin's another ally then you get another moxie some more upgrades um, attached to any ally and then another ant-man which is hank pym which uh, he only has zero health but he gets one hit point for each pim counter on him and uh, when ant-man enter place one pim counter on him to a maximum of four for each resource you overpay for this there's a zero cost card but if you pay for it with four cards then you get to add four extra hit points to uh, ant-man which is handy at times if you need it and then some basic cards some new ones some regular ones with the extra doubles which are really useful for playing for cards so that is ant-man now taking a look at the wasp it shouldn't take as long as we did with the ant-man it's fairly similar but her powers are slightly different on each side she doesn't get to do them instantly on nadia van dyne's side she can shuffle up to two cards with a printed um i think a science resource from your discard pile into your deck so with that symbol on you have to limit that once per turn once per round even but two cards from your discard back into your regular pile really helps you not to get through your cards so much and if you see anything good you want to reuse then you can get them back out again and hopefully they'll come up soon and then on the wasp side she's also very strong when she's in her big form um you can remove using your basic thwart power and that can be divided amongst as many schemes as you want and when you attack also that can be divided amongst people or enemies minions so you could get rid of two minions per turn if you're playing against ultron and he's got his one damage minions that can be really handy also got two thwart two attack and three defense which is really strong and then her tiny form and she's small but mighty so after wasp or an event you play defeats a minion or side scheme you deal one damage to the villain so this is also handy for stacking up a little bit of damage as you go um so she can be quite good she plays a bit differently obviously therefore to one man he gets it straight away when you flip to forms she does not but um she is actually a bit of an easier character to play if you're not used to the style of the game so i'd recommend wasp first for more beginner style players and man can be a little bit more tricky to get his things going her obligation you exhaust nadia van dyne is expected to remove from the game or if you're in hero form you have to discard each card with a printed science resource from your hand and take one damage that is quite a big hit that does do a lot of effect and that can be quite upsetting um so hopefully you don't get that too much um her nemesis is a scheme called mother mother's order and it comes with beetle as her main enemy 
who's got four damage, only one skill and one attack, but can once it's defeated, you then have to spend a punch or aggressive in resource, whatever you want to call it, to shuffle Beetle into the encounter deck. So that can be all right, but a bit annoying. Um, and then there's obviously Beetle armor kit, so an attachment, and then two treachery cards that are the same that come with it. Uh, Beetle attacks you with plus one, and then um, this card gets Surge if you're an alter ego. So that can be quite an annoying set of things to deal with. And then Ant-Man uh, Wasp's cards itself, um, she has Giant Help, uh, remove three Thwart, which can be good. Um, also Scheme, remove total of four threat divided among schemes as you choose instead if you're in Giant Hero form. So that can be useful, but getting four instead of thingy. Then you've got your Pin Particles, a bit like uh, Ant-Man. But as a, after you spend this hit card, heal two damage from your hero if you're in giant form, and take one card in tiny form, which is the same, actually. Uh, another card, while you're in giant form, you get one to retaliate. That is really handy. So while you're in tiny form, your basic attack gains piercing. Again, can be good if you're playing someone like Rhino, who seems to get a lot of tough cards or anything like that. And then she has Ant-Man as Scott Lang as an ally. Uh, while you're in giant form, Ant-Man gets giant trait and gets plus one attack. When you're in tiny form, Ant-Man gains the tiny trait and gets plus one thought to what? Another card, Rapid Growth. So you've got to be in giant form, as it says here, giant and superpower. When you use one of your hero's basic powers, thought, attack or defense, you get to change it to giant hero form and get plus two. That's really good. You've got a couple of those. Uh, Pinpoint Strike deals seven damage to an enemy if you're in tiny hero form. So the Wasp does better damage when she's in tiny compared to Ant-Man with some of these cards. This is quite a lot, seven damage, and you get an extra one damage to that enemy and gain overkill if you're in tiny. So this will do seven in regular and eight in hero, plus get overkill. And pin particles. Um, then we've got upgrades. Wasp gains the aerial trait. Interrupt when you would take any amount of damage, um, which can be really useful. If you're in tiny hero form, you can exhaust biosynthetic wings. Prevent one of that damage. So that keeps you from taking too much. Again, another deal of seven. While you're in giant hero form, you get one thwart. While you're in tiny hero form, get one attack. Sorry, that's shining the light a bit. Um, attack deals seven damage to an enemy, and you get one damage. Then hero attack. If you're in a giant hero form, deal a total of four damage as you choose. And if you're in tiny form, you get five damage. So again, more damage for tiny form. So you've got to know the character a little bit before you start playing. Make sure you're trying to get into the, um, your damage. Um, she comes with aggression mainly. Um, here's another giant help, more thwart removal. So she's got a good balance of everything. And she comes with aggression cards. So mostly a lot of attack. So she actually does more damage than that man in a way. Especially if you're in tiny form. You get a lot of cards like after you change form, deal three damage to an enemy. Four if you pay for it using an aggression kind of symbol. Uh, boot camp, each ally gets one attack. And then some other characters you can use like Thor, Jane Foster from Asgard, it's quite good. Play Thor from your hand, you get two damage dealt to the villain. Or three if you paid using the aggression symbols. Wasp, Je Jeanette Van Dyke, costs nothing to come in. Again, similar to the Hank Pym one. Um, when Wasp enters play, place one pin counter on it to a maximum of three for each lightning resource or electric resource you've used. And another damage, more, another boot camp. And then you get some basic cards again, like, like you do on a lot of them. But she comes with a couple of allies, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Nice to see him in the deck, he's cool. So I think he's really nice to get out just because I like the character. And then you've got Ironheart, Riri Williams also. Um, and these both can be really handy. So I think Wasp is a very friendly character to play if you're new to the game or if you're not used to changing form a lot and doing stuff. So Wasp, I would say, is a beginner-friendly character who I would give an 8.5 out of 10. And then Ant-Man, I would say, is good for people who are a bit more experienced. So I would say that Ant-Man is going to get a 9 out of 10 from me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and I would recommend playing them both together. Uh, catch you soon guys, um, take it easy.